declare open uh, the public hearing of the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters for its inquiry into the 2019 federal election. In accordance with the committee's resolution of 25 July 2019, this hearing will be broadcast on the Parliament's website and the proof and official transcripts of proceedings will be published on the Parliament's website. I remind members of the media who may be present or listening on the web of the need to fairly and accurately report proceedings of the committee. I now call on representatives from GetUp to give evidence in continuation. For the Hansard record, could you please state your full names and the capacity in which you appear before the committee? Yes, that's Paul Listing, National Director on GetUp. And my name is Zahir Idris, I'm GetUp's General Counsel. Excellent. Although the committee does not require you to give evidence under oath, I should advise you this hearing is a legal proceeding of the parliament and therefore has the same standing as proceedings of the respective houses. The giving of false or misleading evidence is a serious matter and may be regarded as a contempt of parliament. The evidence given today will be recorded by Hansard and attracts parliamentary privilege. Uh, so what we might do is kick off with questioning and I'll hand over to, I think, Mr. Mr. Passon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Oosting, um, thank you for being available. <laughs> Today, I take it you monitored the committee's previous hearing where GetUp was re represented by Mr. Idris and Mr. Blake. Is that right? Yes, and um, our First Nations Justice Campaign Director, Larissa Baldwin. Um, what was so important that you could take the time to um, monitor it but not represent uh, GetUp, given you're the most senior official within the organisation? Well, in our submission to the committee, we put forward uh, a number of democratic and electoral reforms um, that we wanted the committee to consider. Um, we, you know, we sort of saw that as, I guess, the, the purpose uh, of these hearings, and, and that's why we focused both our submission and the expert witnesses that we put forward, people that could speak to you know, the experience on the ground around issues of um, voting and enrolment uh, and, you know, these sort of reforms that we've looked at in terms of their issue area expertise and you know, who carry that work Mr. within Mr. Um, but, but happy to be here today. Mr. Oosting, I take it you um, reviewed Ms Flint's evidence later in the day where she detailed how Dave Walsh, the Boothby st stalker and get up worked hand in glove. Your comment about that? Well, um, as my colleague said in the last committee hearing, um, there's there's been you know no evidence as to get up working hand in glove uh, with with that individual. That's not true, is um, it, Mr. Oosting? Mr. Oosting, David Walsh had extensive links to Get Up's SA Action Network, didn't he? Um, David Walsh uh, was not a Get Up member. Um, these. There, there is not evidence as you've characterised it. And look, we, we strongly condemned the sorts of behaviour that were characterised by the member for Boothby at the time. Um, we, and as my colleagues pointed previously, we absolutely had no involvement and, uh, and there's certainly been no suggestion by you know, local authorities who looked into this matter that we did. Um, so, you know, we're 100% confident there was absolutely no involvement at the time on the um, 16th of May uh, in the lead up to the election when, when this issue was arising in the media, we released a statement that said we absolutely condemn this kind of behaviour, is deplorable and not how election campaigns should be conducted. And the statement goes on to say that sexist bullying like this needs to be condemned by everyone, it is never okay, it degrades women and gender non-conforming people and makes it, makes it harder for them to stand in parliament. So we, we um, made sure, as my colleagues previously who appeared pointed out, that we had absolutely no involvement at all. Um, we're confident of that. We condemned these behaviours where they occurred across the political spectrum. Well, Mr Oosting, let's go to the concept of bird dogging. Now, I'm going to assume a level of knowledge on your behalf in relation to bird dogging. That's a technique, of course, that's designed to instill fear and anxiety in the mind of a candidate so as to make the candidature uncomfortable. Um, Mr Oosting, did you personally tick off on the use of bird dogging as a legitimate campaign strategy endorsed by GetUp? Well, look, I, I don't at all accept the characterisation that you've made there. Um, you know, we, well, how do you we, define bird dogging, Mr. Oosting? Look, I, I can. I mean, I mean, my, to, sorry. Um, well, look, look. In my experience, it, the it's an opportunity to raise some of the issues that often don't get picked up 
Um, you know, for instance, yeah, we you know would have, I attended a, a press event with Peter Coombs, the um, the singer and songwriter, to do um, uh, perform a song about climate change. We had bananas in pajamas, B one and B two, at a number of media events. Um, so these were opportunities to raise issues of climate change, funding of the public broadcasters, um, and that's our intent to get issues get issues. Um, but Mr. As part of Mr. Oosting, let, let, let's talk friends. frankly. Let's talk frankly, Mr. Oosting. That's not examples of bird dogging. Bird dogging is the campaign technique to make um, the exercise of being a candidate uncomfortable, so as to limit the um, aptitude of a candidate to be in public. And, um, Mr. No, I, I mean, I could absolutely reject that with all due respect. I mean, and, and if that's your characterisation, that, that's yours. Well, that's, that's certainly it. not at all well, with how, how we would approach it. With respect, Mr. Oosting, that's the internationally accepted um, understanding. Now, let's move on. I don't, think, I don't think that's the case, Mr. Passon. Well, that's rubbish. Bird dogging, is bird dogging still included in the get up uh, training and other volunteer resources that you provide to um, volunteers? Look, our, our focus um, was not on bird dogging in, in 2019, and it hasn't hasn't been since. Um, we, was it included we, in your training manual? It was in in uh, it was last year. That's correct. Is is it still included in your training manual? Um, look, we have have uh, I think those training manuals are still on our website, so it's, it's there. So it is still um, part of your campaign room. technique, as endorsed by GetUp. Look, we're looking for opportunities to get the issues on on the public radar. If that means you know uh, turning up to events with B1 and B2 or giant heads of Tony Abbott and Peter Dutton as we did in 2019, then these these can be ways of making sure that uh, issues remain part of policy and public debates. So um, I take it from that, Mr. Oosting, you don't take any responsibility for the consequences of the bird dog training that volunteers receive and the actions that led directly to in respect of Ms. Flint. Um, and what she had to experience during the 2019 campaign? Well, we looked closely into the situation in Boothby and we're confident we had absolutely no involvement. Um, and so I reject your characterisation um, wholly. We condemned the behaviour at the time. We continue to do so to this day. Um, and that's something I think we, we all take very seriously. And so we appreciate where your question is coming from, but it's uh, not correct and unfair to characterise that somehow GetUp was involved in those incidents. But Mr Oosting, uh, Henrietta Smith, who launched the GetUp's campaign in Boothby said, and I quote, we're getting people razzed up with town hall meetings and getting people working in their neighbourhoods with limited oversight from us. It's low control from, headquarter, uh, from our headquarters. So on the one hand, you provide um, uh, training in relation to what bird dogging uh, is, that is to make the campaign experience uncomfortable um, for candidates, and then it's stand back, low control. Um, do you accept that these circumstances uh, can occur, that people can take your training uh, and go too far? Well, that's certainly not the case. Uh, we, as I say, we looked into it. Uh, the, the, the person you raised, David Walsh, was not a GetUp member, was not part of our training, so it's simply untrue. Um, Mr Oosting, um, were GetUp members counselled or the subject of disciplinary action as a result of bird dogging practices that occurred in 2019? Um, I might have a quick look, if that's okay, just to refresh my memory to see if there was anything like that, Mr Patton. Um, <clears throat> what I can say is that anyone who is a volunteer signs up to our volunteer code of conduct. The Code of Conduct says that GetUp does not tolerate racist, sexist, homophobic, ableist or ageist language or behaviour, harassment or bullying or intentional or unintentional breaches of the GetUp uh, Code of Conduct and Privacy Policies. Um, nothing comes to mind that directly. Um, I believe uh, I, I'd have to check um, if anyone specifically was um, as, a, as a result of how you've characterised it as, as a result of some of their dogging tactics. Now, given the media coverage that Ms Flint's treatment attracted, did any uh, board member at GetUp raise concerns around questions of bird dogging or other behaviour with respect to GetUp in that Boothby campaign? Look, I think everybody was concerned at the incidents in Boothby and other places. Did um, GetUp come out and condemn that action immediately? 
Yeah, that's right. We, we as I as I mentioned, and we're happy to provide a copy of. Did they reject statement. the use of bird dogging, or as you say, does it remain your current and endorsed campaign tactic? Uh, yeah, look. Uh, to answer your question, we uh, took the issue very seriously um, in the incidents there, um, as we did across a range of um, places that occurred. But um, it remains your endorsed campaign tactic, Mr. Oosting. I'm struggling to understand this. Well, look, we've, we've never endorsed and never would endorse the sorts of behaviour that occurred in Boothby. I think that's a, a deliberate mischaracterisation of what occurred in Boothby. You provide training to individuals about how to successfully bird dog candidates. I can't be any clearer. Do you reject bird dogging Please. as a legitimate campaign tool? The statements and the um, incidents that we saw in relation to Boothby weren't characterised at the time, um, at least by the media, as bird dogging. And, and, and certainly I don't think we meet any um, reasonable person's definition of bird dogging. We conducted a review immediately. Um, we take these incidents very seriously. We were, you know, we are 100 per cent confident. We had absolutely no involvement with those um, incidents um, that were characterised in the media as stalking and so forth. And then um, and we're happy to provide this um, in copy to the committee on the 16th of May, we released a, a statement that said, uh, and I'll reread it, we absolutely condemn this kind of behaviour. It is deplorable and not how election campaigns should be conducted. Sexist bullying like this needs to be condemned by everyone. It is never okay. It degrades women and gender non-conforming people and makes it harder for them to stand in parliament. I think we took uh, strong and clear action there. We, we know that we weren't involved, but we still made sure it was informed publicly that we condemned those sorts of behaviour, just as we did in Flinders and Ringer and a range of other places where um, uh, concerns were raised in the media. Uh, Mr Oosting, that being said, um, will you commit today to end the practice of bird dogging, end the practice of training your volunteers around bird dogging, um, so as not to target female out MPs, as you did in the Bootby campaign, irrespective of political persuasion. And if you don't, unwilling to commit to that, why not? Well, I, I think you're, um, again, misleading uh, both uh, the public and the behaviour that we've, we've set out that we conduct in the Bootby. Um, we, we did not, and I'll continue to state, and I've answered your question repeatedly, it's a mischaracterisation uh, of, of what occurred in Boothby, and certainly a mischaracterisation of GetUp's behaviour in Boothby. We had absolutely um, no involvement in those activities. We've stated this repeat, repeatedly. Um, there's been absolutely no suggestion by local authority or, or others that GetUp had um, any involvement. And um, so I think that that's very clear. There, there is, um, and, that, and furthermore, we condemn those behaviours and still do. Nobody should be treated like this uh, when standing for Parliament. Parliament should be um, something that's, that's freely available to uh, any individual to engage in. And that's something that it's all too clear we all need to seek to um, address. And that's why we released the strong statements at the time condemning that sort of behaviour. And that statement was uh, issued on the 16th of May. Uh, that that's, that's, that, that's correct, Senator. Um, right. Senator, so, uh, so that uh, was two days before the election, after this type of behaviour had been going on for a considerable period of time. We, we responded on the same day that these, these stories were emerging in the media. Um, so there was an ABC article um, from ABC Adelaide, um, which, which details the incidents that were raised by the committee um, and, and obviously um, the media at the time. And so we released our statement that same day. And uh, can you give us a list to whom you sent that media release? It was sent publicly. It's on. It's available on our um, Twitter um, account. No, to, to whom you sent it is the question. Not whether you put it up on Twitter, but whether you sent it to media outlets specifically. Look, look. It would have been sent to all the media outlets. And sorry, Australia. sorry. It would have been sent to all. Um, you say media it would have been. I'm asking, was it? Please concentrate on the question asked. 
Was it sent to all media outlets? If so, please provide a list on notice to the committee of all those media outlets to which it was sent with verification. Look, I'm, I'm confident we spoke to individuals. This was a story, I mean, I don't think the story actually made any mention of Getup, but we did speak to um, the you know, media contacts in South Australia at the time. And the purpose, if I could finish my statement, um, of releasing it on Twitter, of course, is that it's a platform that's widely used by journalists. It's in the public domain, so I'm confident that it was widely received by, by um, all, all journalists and media following this story. Well, I've asked you to take a question on notice. Please do so and provide the details that are being sought. Now, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's additional information we can provide. This, there, this is a widely available public. You said, statement. you said, you said it was sent to all media outlets. When I asked you Correct. to provide, when I asked you to. When I asked Great you to, Senator, it's available on Twitter. If, if you, that, you ask me you. not to interrupt you, which is a fair thing, please don't interrupt me. You, you indicated that it was a um, uh, sent. This statement was sent to all media outlets. When I then asked you to provide a list, you are now denying us that. Is that correct? No, no, I'm just pointing right. out that it, in we, that we case, will provide it In that case, if you're not denying it, can you please take it on notice and provide us with a list of all the media outlets to whom it was, to which it was sent? And uh, if you can take that on notice, uh, that would be exceptionally helpful to check the veracity of your initial statement. Now, can I ask whether um, get up appeared at Ms Flint's electorate office from time to time. Look, we've, we've gone through this exhaustively, Senator Betts, and we've made it um, clear, um, and there's certainly been no suggestion we're involved in the behaviours that your, your previous colleague have raised, and certainly been no suggestion by um, by any local authorities or the like. Um, have we, have we, do we at times go to MPs' offices? Of course. Um, they're, they're public places. All right. Can I ask again? Very simple question. Did GetUp appear at Ms Flint's electorate office from time to time uninvited during this campaign? The answer is either yes that, or no. Sorry? Yeah, I suspect that would have been I suspect that would have been the case. You suspect. As national director, you would know whether it occurred yes or no. Look, yeah, I think it would have been the case, uh, Senator. You say I, you I, I think it would be the case. Do you need, if you need to take it on notice, I'm sure you know, because you were listening in last time round, but didn't make yourself available to answer these types of questions. Don't interrupt. And therefore, I'm now asking you to tell us whether you, who was the national organiser, knew about GetUp appearing at Ms Flint's electorate office. Senator, I'm confident that at some point we would have been at, at the MP's office as we would have been in most MP's offices um, across the country, in fact. So after all this, can we say the answer is yes? Uh, yeah, that's a fair characterisation of what I said originally. Uh, no, it would have been a lot better if you would have just answered the question honestly without the obfuscation at the very beginning, but let's keep moving. And did GetUp seek to attend or uh, stalk a private event that was not even advertised in Boothby? Your characterisation there, I think, is misleading and untrue. Of course, we would never uh, seek to stalk anybody. All right, let me delete the word stalk. Did you attend? a private only, unadvertised function for Ms. Boo, uh, for Ms Flint in the seat of Boothby? Um, I can't speak to whether or not the event was uh, private. I believe there are a range of organisations um, and media there, which was characterised by the MP in her presentation as, as I understood it. And, and yes, GetUp was uh, present at that event. Yeah, with a Peter Dutton head. 
Is that correct? Supply yeah, by we had, get up. We had, um, yeah, a giant theatrical head of Peter Dutton and possibly also uh, Tony Abbott. And I think um, yeah. B1 and B2, we were, as I mentioned earlier, where our aim was to put issues of climate and the um, funding of uh, public broadcasters um, as part of the um, debate of um, of the election campaign. And this is classic bird dogging, is it not? Um, I, I don't know if I would characterise it as bird dogging. This, I think this was, as I understood, a widely um, attended event and, uh, um, you know, uh, it's uh, people who often attend public events, media events and so forth. And private events that David Walsh himself confirmed, um, or Dave Walsh confirmed, uh, that he was at private events, uh, including one at Blackwood, and uh, seems to have known, Mr Walsh seems to have known a lot about uh, GetUp's involvement in the seat of Boothby. I think what's probably important, uh, Senator Roberts, is to know that most of the work that our members and volunteers do are available publicly. So if Mr Walsh, who we've said repeatedly was not a Get Up member, had nothing to do with anything we did, was following these publicly available events, he could have known. So it's nothing unusual. You could have known, really, what we were doing at every single one of our events uh, had you have taken the time. And Mr Walsh just happened to know about what Get Up was doing uh, and was willing to uh, Facebook post about these things, but... Uh not a member of GetUp, no interest in GetUp, just fortuitous that he did this. Well, it's got nothing to do with, I, I can't speak to what Mr Walsh was doing. We've repeated ourselves a number of times that Mr Walsh was not a member. Mm. He was not involved in GetUp campaigning or any of its tactics. What, what he does is what it would have been for him to respond to. How do you determine membership of GetUp? If they've signed a petition or you're on your mailing list? How's that determined? Yeah, correct. Through, through participation, people become members um, and, and engage in a range of different ways. Uh, and and you then process. email them. Is that correct? That, that's one of the activities, yes. Yeah. And can you tell us, can you tell us whether Mr um, Walsh was ever emailed by GetUp? The, the events that you're referring to are in the public domain, and it's important to make clear. Uh, no, just, just the answer members. the question. Was Mr Dave Walsh ever emailed by GetUp, which, according to your evidence just given, is a test of membership? Yeah, correct. He's, he was not a GetUp um, member, and so therefore would not have been emailed. He would not have been emailed. Thank you for that. That's on the record. Okay, could I just um, check a couple of things? Um, in previous evidence before the committee, GetUp has represented that there is no, f no links to uh, members of the Australian Labor Party. Is that still your evidence? The, sorry, I um, wasn't able to catch the- Look, I'll be more direct. Daniel Stone and Phil Ireland are members of your board, aren't they? Correct. And they have a long history and association with the Australian Labor Party. That's correct, isn't it? I can go through it if you like, but we can just accept that, can't we? Look, I mean... It's a yes or no, have... Mr Oosting. You know them well. It's a yes or no. Well, yeah, I was seeking to answer your question. The, I think uh, yeah, they have had those involvements, as have arranged... Did they raise any objection as the members... Of... People should be I'm open in a democratic society to be involved and share political views as they see fit. Um, did they raise as board members any concern relating um, the technique of bird dogging, uh, but either before it was adopted in the 2019 campaign, during the 2019 campaign, or subsequently? Uh, not to my recollection, no, this is, um, we have had no involvement with the incidents that you've outlined. No, no, I'm not we, talking about uh, the incidents. I'm now saying the concept of bird dogging, which you teach and train as part of your technique manual, has Mr Stone or Mr Island raised objection to Eve to that concept of bird dogging as you train it? No, I don't think so. So to this point, it's very, very important, Mr Oosting, and I endorse what you said about the need to broad
political involvement in these things. It's true to say, isn't it, that a future Conservative female candidate in a marginal or otherwise seat at the Australian, the forthcoming federal election, can expect to face bird dogging um, at the hands uh, of get up operatives um, in those future campaigns. That's the case, isn't it? You're not resiling from bird dogging or it being a legitimate campaign technique. And female candidates um, with a conservative uh, background can expect to face that at the next federal election, can't they? Well, as I said earlier, we completely reject your characterisation of, of bird dogging. I think it's misleading um, and disingenuous, and it's not the sort of activities as you've characterised that, that we've ever engaged in. So you teach bird dogging, which is a hunting phrase about targeting um, uh, a, uh, a targeting game and making the experience uncomfortable for the game, exhausting them, tiring them out, and making them therefore easier to. Um, to kill, I'm not suggesting there's any plan to kill in relation to your approach to bird dogging, but the concept is the same, isn't it? It's to create a sense of fear, anxiety, concern, and to limit their oh. efficacy as a candidate. That's true, isn't it? No, that's not at all. Well, what is because bird dogging then? What, why call it bird dogging and not, not simply act, active campaigning? Well, I mean, I think that it is act, active campaigning, and I. But I, you call I, it I, bird I, dogging. You train it as bird dogging, I think, Mr. Oosting. I think, I think I've answered your question a number no, of times. With respect, you have it on this topic. I've provided, I've provided you with tangible examples of how, how I characterise bird dogging and how we can only give you an honest answer. We can only give you facts. Um, you will continue to mislead and try and set, set about. Be very to careful, Mr. Oosting. Your the your suggestion brain. that I'm misleading this committee or, or, or this place is a very serious allegation. Mate, I think uh, Mr. Oosting, if you can answer this question for me, and I just want to be clear, future candidates can expect to face the same sort of campaign courtesy of GetUp that Nicole Flint faced in 2019. That's your evidence, isn't it? Look, well, I think we've made our answers to this abundantly clear. GetUp condemned the behaviours that were raised by Nicole Flint at the time. We continue to condemn it to this day. Um, as, a, as we mentioned um, in, our, in our statement in May, we condemn this kind of behaviour that, that she received and was part of her testimony and submission to this committee. It was deplorable and not how election campaigns should be conducted. Sexist bullying like this needs to be condemned by everyone. It's never OK. It degrades women and gender non-conforming people and makes it harder for them to stand in Parliament. Now, that was a statement you issued in relation to Mr... Excuse me, Mr Oosting. That was a statement you issued in relation to Mr Bunny, the person who was charged with stalking uh, Georgina Downer. It, it wasn't a statement issued in relation to the Boothby campaign or Mr Walsh, is it? No, this was a statement in relation oh, to um, ABC Adelaide media reports for Liberal MP Nicole Flint. Um, that Wait. was um, the, the title of... The, um, the media at the articles at the time was Liberal MP Nicole Flint has been targeted by a disgraceful and shameful, etc. Mm. Chair, could I just raise a very quick point here? I was always of the view in the evidence that Mr Oosting was giving in relation to Mr Walsh that the statement that was being read out related to Mr Walsh's behaviour. It's now only because of the forensic cross-examination of Mr Passon that we get to hear that it wasn't related to Mr Walsh, but Mr Bunny. Uh, I, I treat that very seriously, but look, back to Mr Passon, but so just, please be careful with your evidence. Just to round out, Mr Oosting, it's your evidence that whilst you um, condemn the actions uh, that Ms Flint faced, you endorse and indeed intend to continue to use the practice of bird dogging. Can I just ask you this question? And I'm sorry if it is somewhat personal of nature. But Mr Oosting, put yourself in the shoes of Nicole Flint, uh, a single woman running in a marginal seat, facing a very um, strong challenge. Would you, in that circumstance, appreciate being bird, dog, bird dogged at your place of business, at your home, where you gather with friends, 
and for it to sustain itself during the course of the campaign. Would you appreciate that behaviour and do you think that's fair cut and thrust in a, of a federal election campaign? Well, as, as we've said, of course, we, we, we condemned it and we, therefore in that condemnation, we are very clearly stating we do not accept it and do not think it is acceptable. And I think what I'm hearing from the committee is that a lot more needs to be done in order create the sort of space where um, women uh, can stand for parliament in a safe and accept acceptable way. That's something that we absolutely support those goals. Well, Mr Oosing, one of the first things that could happen is you could stop um, training people in the concept of bird dogging, because with respect, uh, this would operate as more of a disincentive uh, for women to involve themselves in political campaigns, but individuals generally think that anything I've seen in 15 years in politics. So will you commit, consistent with your last statement, to end the practice of bird dogging, uh, end the practice of teaching and training bird dogging, uh, and condemn that activity going forward? Look, as you characterise bird dogging, that is not the sort of activities that that get up engages in, and I think I've made made that um, clear and answered your question. But Mr. Oosting, you've also said in evidence, or at least GetUp has, that you take a low supervision approach. So on the one hand, you weaponise individuals with an understanding of how to make campaigns uncomfortable for candidates, and then you step back and, and say, "But we're not going to supervise you actively in the field." I mean, you have created this circumstance, and it's one which you should condemn. It's a technique you should condemn, but you don't. You endorse it, and you say you're going to use it in future campaigns and target um, members of parliament, as you did Nicole Flint in 2019. Look, I think it's wholly untrue and unfounded in fact to characterise that we created those circumstances. So did you or did you not train get up volunteers in Boothby in, in, in the technique of bird dogging? We didn't tra train people in bird dogging. We, we, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I want to be clear about this, Mr. Oosting. Your training materials say in black and white. Correct. Um, yes. And yes. talk that, specifically. That, training... It's your language, not mine. So no, you correct. say on the, the one training... hand you didn't train people in bird dogging, but it's in your training materials. Come on. Yeah, I agree that it's in the training materials, but our focus in, in Boothby was on doing things like, um, you know, making um, phone calls, trying to reach out to the public, holding public events. That's, That's not bird dogging. Was. That's not yeah. bird dogging, Mr. Oosting. And your attempts to recategorise it, quite frankly, are disingenuous. I mean, uh, bird dogging was not a focus of our campaigns. Our, as, as we've talked about openly and widely publicly, our focus of our campaigns was reaching out to voters in electorates across the country, uh, making for phone calls, going door knocking. That's where our training it. But, but in the case where you had a vulnerable single female candidate, you adopted bird dogging as your principal technique in that electorate, didn't you? And you trained for it. Well, as, as you've characterised it, I think that it's misleading to the way that we engage ourselves. We, um, we, as I mentioned, we had we had the giant heads, as you've pointed out, of um, Peter Dutton and uh, I think Tony Abbott, and we had B1 and B2, and we, we had um, you know a range of um, sort of theatrical things to to bring up the issues of public funding of broadcasters and climate change. Pardon me. So it's a matter of complete coincidence, you say, that in the campaign where you. Uh, engage volunteers, where you trained them in the concept uh, of bird dogging and the techniques, that's a complete coincidence that actually in that campaign we had an occasion of a female candidate being stalked by someone who, uh, who was incredibly close to the Get Up SA network in South Australia. Co complete coincidence, you say? Well, we had absolutely no involvement, as we've made clear. We condemn those behaviours and will continue to condemn them wherever they occur across the political spectrum, um, as we did in a range of behaviours um, in seats right across the country, from Flinders to Warringah and many other places. So when you say you condemned Mr Walsh's behaviour, did your statement specifically refer to Mr Walsh uh, rather than Mr Bunny? The, the statement that I read out to the committee and we can provide... Um, I think you should. You know, Thank you. ...follow-up is, is, is available on our, publicly on our Twitter account. And, um, yeah, it was in relation to an ABC Adelaide um, 
media article on the 16th of May and it was in relation to MP Nicole Flint. And Mr Bunny or Mr Walsh, which was the question? Not everything um, I don't have. I don't have that news article um, in front of me at the moment. And how did you um, disseminate that? that how did you disseminate that statement, Mr. Oosting? Was it sent to all your 1.4 million volunteers? Um, the, there was no um, suggestion that GetUp was involved. Uh, we released the statement on um, on Twitter, and and I believe we made phone calls to the local media contacts in South Australia who had been covering the story. So who was the get-up leader in Boothby for the federal campaign? Uh, René Jury. Right. We might need to ask questions there. But look, uh, Mr Edries knew that you were listening in at the last uh, hearing. That's the case, is it not? I, I gave evidence that he was not here, but he was... No, no, no. I'm asking Mr Oosting. Mr Oosting. No, Mr Edries knew that you were listening in to the last hearing. That could only be directed to you, Mr Oosting, but for clarity... Sorry, I missed what you said, Mr Rivets. All um, right, Mr no, Oosting, you knew that Mr <laughs> Edries... Correct, yes. Yes. So, Mr Edries, why did you have great difficulty in answering that question to us when I asked whether or not you were aware, or somebody asked, whether or not whether uh, Mr Oosting was listening in. I, I do believe I said I couldn't be certain what he was doing, but I knew he was not here in the room. Yeah, but he you was, knew. He, you knew. So why well, did you with, obfuscate? With respect, with respect, Mr Abetz, you positing what I knew is not appropriate, but I told you what I had at the time, and my evidence at the time was true, and it will continue to be that. Despite the fact that Mr Oosting has just given evidence that he knew, that you knew, that he was listening in. But look, let's move I on. Said, I believe, no, with, no, just to correct the record, I believe Mr Oosting said he was listening in, to, but how, he could not possibly know what I was thinking at the time, which was the point I was trying to make. But if Mr Oosting and you had had a discussion or knew that he would not make himself available but nevertheless listen in, it would be in the knowledge of both of you. One of you has given evidence as to that knowledge. You, Mr Edries, regrettably have obfuscated. But look, time is short. Let's move on. Mr Edries uh, confirmed uh, at the last hearing in September the get-up through your decision-making, Mr Oosting, employed a number of senior organisers who were dispatched around the country to direct campaigns in particular seats. You wouldn't uh, seek to alter that evidence, Mr Oosting? No, that's a correct. Thank you. Now, did these senior organisers that were dispatched around the country include Jake Wishart? Yes, uh, Jack was one of our uh, staff during the campaign. Yeah, was he dispatched to somewhere in the country? If so, where? Uh, uh, Jack, um, I think, is from Melbourne and worked within uh, Melbourne and spent some time in the electorate of Flinders, I believe. All right, what about Sean Murray? He was sim uh, yes, similarly was, employed? Yes, Sean was. Uh, I think we've, we've already uh, addressed these questions on questions on notice, but to go back over, yep, Sean was a uh, staff member of GetUp during the 20, 2019 election campaign. As was Alessandro Moliterno and Billy Marshall. Correct. And was bird dogging part of their job? And organising bird dogging? Look, as, as we've gone over the um, bird dogging in terms of raising um, you know, issues in, in a theatrical way was a part of our campaign. We had you know, giant um, costume heads of Peter uh, Dutton and Tony Abbott and raising issues of climate change and um, a range of other issues and causes. Yes, yes, yes. What about bird dogging? 
only question, not about everything else, but bird dogging, which you so studiously sought to avoid with my friend and colleague, Mr. Passon. I'm only asking about bird dogging. Was part well, of I, the I job I was, to... I was responding to bird dogging and, and, and your colleague was mischaracterising, uh, in my view, what is meant by that, and that's why I was at pains to outline what, what it means in reality. Well, you have it defined, uh, courtesy of the links, on... Uh, GetUp's uh, website, what bird dogging is, so we can go back to that if need be. But was and and was part and way, was part? We, we excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Oosting, excuse me. Was bird dogging part of their job? Wishart, Murray, Moliterno, Marshall, and I think the other four that you confirmed on notice. As we've confirmed previously, the, um, that was one of the range of ways in terms of raising um, you know, the issues in, in a theatrical way that they get engaged in the 2019 election campaign. So bird dogging was part of their job? Yeah, correct. It was, Good. It was part of the organisation. So, um, so it's very easy if you simply ask the question and saves a lot of time. So would you agree it, that organising a church invasion Surveil using a surveillance van circling the electorate spying on another campaign or disrupting a press conference while dressed as a squid might be determined to be or uh, described as bird dogging. I'm so sorry, the question is, would that, that be... Yeah, uh, organising have... the church invasion at a uh, candidate's forum, using a surveillance van, circling the electorate, spying on a uh, campaign, disrupting a press conference while dressed as a squid. Are these the sort of activities that could rightfully be described as bird dogging? Well, I don't think it's um, true or accurate to describe it as a um, you know, church invasion. I think that's inaccurate and misleading. Um, but the giant squids... What do you, um, what do you mean? That might that's be a way misleading. to raise the issues of climate change or... Um, no, no, no. The Let's not area. worry about what the issue you were trying to promote. I'm just talking about the activity is organising the, the church invasion of a candidate's forum and ignore the term church if be it a town hall invasion at a candidate's forum or surveilling or uh, disrupting a press conference dressed as a squid. All that is classic bird dogging, is it not? Um, look, I don't accept the premise that there was some sort of invasion. Um, as I in have not approach. made that allegation. I'm just putting to you certain activities that might be described as bird dogging, and you are exceptionally defensive because I think you know certain activities that GetUp may have been involved in, and I might be getting to specifics later. But I am only asking in generalities at this time. And it fits in with bird dogging, doesn't it? Invading a candidate's forum, um, using a surveillance van to get round an electorate, or disrupting a press conference dressed as a squid. That is classic bird dogging, is it not? I don't accept the way that you're characterising the use of the word invasion as what I was responding to in Senator Abetz. Well, you know that Jake Wishart organised uh, that at the Candidates Forum uh, in Flinders, Mr Marshall in Dixon with a get-up surveillance van, and uh, Alessandro Moliterno disrupting Dave Sharma's press conference while stressed as a squid. Now, moving on, these guys, Jake Wishart, Alessandro Moliterno, and yourself, were you ever captured giving the raised fist salute with Moliterno still in his squid outfit celebrating the Wentworth by-election? Sorry, you said I missed the beginning of your question. Did you say was, was I...? Yeah, in a picture with Wishart and Moliterno with raised fists saluting uh, the Wentworth by-election result with Moliterno in a squid outfit. Was, was I personally? Yes. Is that the question? Yes. All oh, right. Um, uh, not that I recall. I not that possible. you recall. All right. Uh, all right, you don't recall. Interesting you don't, but uh, let's move on. Can I then ask quickly, because time is short, 
And I want to give you a photograph on notice for you to look at. Is that available per chance to be put up now or not? If not, we will do that on notice. But you would be aware of the Australian Electoral Commissioner's evidence to the Senate completely countering the false um, submission that you've made to this committee. The AEC ruled in GetUp's favour as recently as February this year, specifically finding GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based. The Electoral Commission never found that, did it? Well, Senator, the you know, GetUp's um, rep is, rep um, get -up's reputation um, and our independence, our, um, our the way that we engage in campaigns has been misrepresented by yourself to the AAC. I think uh, I had a quick Google uh, yesterday afternoon before appearing. Can you, you please answer the question? Fire. Sorry to interrupt. This is not about you making assertions. This is about you putting in effect on oath to this committee that the AEC specifically found GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based, the GetUp plays an important role on election day, the GetUp is non-partisan. All these matters have been specifically refuted by the Australian Electoral Commissioner, not once, but twice. What have you done to correct the record to this committee to your membership and to the public at large. Well, Senator, I think it is relevant actually because on hand side you have continued um, on a number of occasions since 2005 to misrepresent, get up to claim that we're not independent, that we're somehow No, no, no. Don't worry about my misrepresentations. And, and no, sorry, 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 Mr. Oosting. You it, have to answer the question. question. It is not about I'm me. It is the question is about, is about your misrepresentation of the Australian Electoral Commission, which is an independent statutory authority, and you seek to clothe your organisation with credibility, putting words into the Electoral Commission's mouth, which they specifically refuted not once but twice. What have you done to correct the public record? Well, following a number of misrepresentations made by yourself, Senator Abetz, the, we have written to the um, to the AEC, Tom Rogers, uh, in September of 2020, and um, and happy to read that in here. That uh, or, or can you table? September. Can, can you uh, table that for the committee and present that to the committee? Yeah, I'll read it in now. GetUp representatives were questioned about GetUp's use of wording and submission to the committee by Senator Betts, including the AEC's investigator, GetUp three times and single times has confirmed our independence. Um, you know, we, we, as mentioned in the email, the 25th of October 2019, GetUp agrees that this is technically not correct, but that rather the Electoral Commission was unable to find on those occasions that GetUp is an associate entity of those parties. And so in our submission, we have sought to make sure that the public are aware that the statements that you've made in Parliament claiming that GetUp is not independent or somehow partisan and that we should be found to be an associated entity uh, are untrue. The electoral commission Let's looked into the mat matter look. of whether or not an associated entity which so is For the purposes of this <laughs> argument, Mr. Oosting, let's just pretend that everything I say is untrue. How is that in any way, shape or form relevant to your deliberate mischaracterisation of the independent statutory authority known as the Australian Electoral Commission, which has said not once but twice, in effect under oath to parliamentary committees, that your representations of them are false. Mm -hmm. I might be the worst person in the world. That does not exculpate you from the egregious misrepresentation of the independent Australian Electoral Commission. Can you show us in any way, shape or form where the Australian Electoral Commission has, to quote your words, made a specific finding that GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based, or the GetUp plays an important role on election day, or GetUp is non-partisan? 
Are you able to give us any examples? Examples of what? what sorry, Senator? <laughs> I know you're not that obtuse, but I will repeat the question for you. Can you provide us any evidence, any shred of evidence, where the Australian Commi uh, Electoral Commission has specifically found the Get Up campaigns are 100% issues based? The Get Up plays an important role on election day. The Get Up is nonpartisan. Well, well, as I mentioned, it was it was established by by yourself and others that that somehow the associated entity definition was going to be a test. No, get up this some is this we're, is we're, we're, irrelevant, we're Mr. Oosting. Answer the question. Answer the question. What I may or may not have said is irrelevant. You have sought to assert that the Australian Electoral Commission has made specific findings in relation to GetUp, matters which the Australian Electoral Commission has specifically refuted, not once, but twice. So I'm now asking you for your evidence for these assertions, and if, as is clear by your obfuscation, you cannot provide that evidence, could I invite you, one, to correct the public record for this egregious misrepresentation of the Electoral Commission and consider your future and resign? Um, well, I think we, there's two, two quick points that I would make. We, we have written to the AEC and have endeavoured um, as we outlined to them, to be very clear about the legal um, definitions and the particular um, legal test that is... Um, but where's the evidence for your statements? Is where's the entity. evidence? And we're happy to table that with the committee um, following this hearing today. I've read in that letter. As I say, we, we said to them that we would endeavour to ensure that we were very clear with the definition of the associated entity test um, we are confident, obviously, 100% confident in GetUp's independence, um, and uh, and or, and and it has been found by the AEC that GetUp is not an associated entity and or affiliated with any political party. How does how does that in independence? How does that in any way, shape, or form answer my questions as to your egregious misrepresentation of the Australian Electoral Commission, which it has specifically refuted, not once but twice? Where is the evidence? Well, well look, in terms of evidence, as I say, we're happy to provide our um, letter to the AAC. No, 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 that's not evidence. Yeah. Your letter cannot be evidence as to what you assert the AEC has said about you. It must be statements made by the AEC about you on which you rely on in this false document, I suggest. And I want to know where you got that evidence from. I think it was out of thin air. It's been fabricated. It's been refuted by the Electoral Commission. And that is why you ought to do the decent thing, correct the public record, consider your position, Mr Oosting, do the decent thing and resign. And Chair, if the committee were so minded, I think Mr Oosting and GetUp should be called again because time is running out. Thank you, Senator, Senator Betts. Uh, time is running out and I appreciate the, the goodwill of my, my Labor colleagues. Over to you, please. I've got seven questions that you may or may not take on notice. Hello, Mr Oosting and Mr Idris. It's nice to see you again, even though it's not in person. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't think we need the commentary, we'll Senator exactly Betts. That, that is really ungracious no, no, after no, we no, allow. I'm sure it is. I'm well, sure that's, it is. That's, Chair, I would appreciate. Chair, yeah, a bit of behaviour standards, just, please. If we just time, get please, through what you. we've got to get through, um, does get up endorse harassment or intimidation of candidates or campaign workers? No, we widely condemn it. Does get up train volunteers to harass or intimidate candidates or campaign workers? No, of course not. Does get up condemn sexist behaviour? Absolutely. Does GetUp want to see more women involved in our political processes? Yeah, it's something we've campaigned for over many years and um, we welcome those who are now joining those calls. Is GetUp an associated entity of the ALP? No, the, the, the AAC has been pressed by Senator Regrets a number of times to look into this matter and on the three occasions that we've looked into it, they've found that it's not an association of any political party. Has GetUp campaigned against Labor MPs or Senators over the time of GetUp's existence for policy positions the ALP has taken? 
Yeah, absolutely. And that number of both state and federal um, issues and, and election campaigns. Are Liberal Party members or former Liberal Party members involved with GetUp? Uh, Liberal Party members, as in members of the public or...? Just party members, either current activists, former activists, former MPs, current MPs. Have they had any connection or members, membership of GetUp? Look, look, in the past when we've surveyed our membership, we, we find people coming from all, um, all political persuasions. Um, I think there would be um, people participating in some of our causes um, from, in, from every part of the political spectrum. So there will be Liberal Party members, there will be Nationals, there will be Labor, Greens, there will be people who dislike all politicians, um, the full spectrum. OK, thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your attendance here today. Um, further questions will be put to you in writing. You'll be sent a copy of the transcript of your evidence. We'll have an opportunity to request corrections to any transcription errors. Before I close the public hearing, I call upon a member of the committee to move that the committee authorise the publication of the evidence given before it at the public hearing today, including publication of the proof transcript on the Parliamentary Electronic Database. So moved, Senator Askew, so resolved. Thank you very much, um, everybody. Uh, this meeting is now closed. Thank you, Pansard Broadcast. Um, and, and Secretariat. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all.